Hi, everyone. This is a blank sheet of paper. In the next five minutes, it has the potential to become someone's class notes. It could be a letter to Santa. It could even be the first page to the greatest novel ever written. A stem cell is a blank page to the human body. Its fate has limitless possibilities, and its potential is unbounded. Simply put, a stem cell is an undifferentiated cell that has the potential to become any other type of cell. Everyone in this audience right now, you all started off as a stem cell. And then your DNA came in, did all the work, and differentiated each group of your stem cells into your muscles, into your heart, into your brain, until we get the finished product, you. So I first got interested in stem cells when I was just a 15-year-old high schooler. And my teacher gave us the opportunity to write about them. Of course, in my mind, I was like, do I really want to write a paper about the cells inside the stem of a plant? Because <laughs> up until then, that's all I thought a stem cell was. But six years later, with a college education from USC, I now know that it is so much more. I was reading this article the other day about a 21-year-old college student, not unlike myself or many of you in the audience, who got in a car accident and was paralyzed from the neck down. At such a young age, he had his independence to live stripped from him. Desperate for a miracle, he applied to be part of a clinical trial in which doctors injected stem cells into his spinal cord, and within a few months, he regained motor function in his arms and hands. Now, a young man who wouldn't have been able to brush his own teeth can feed himself, can hug his family and friends, can even lift weights. It was revolutionary. There is all this optimism and excitement being funneled into stem cell research right now because stem cells have the allure of being the elixir to all our problems. Research is being done this very second on how stem cells could treat Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, arthritis, blindness, cancer, same-sex reproduction. Whoa, whoa, hold up, rewind. Did you just say same-sex reproduction? Yes, I did. The idea that we could have a child who genetically represents 50% of each of their same-gendered parent. A world where this baby could be a child to his parents the same way I am a child to mine. You must be thinking, how do we just jump from the topic of stem cells to same-sex couples? Well, you need to understand stem cell biology in order to achieve that great feat. Now, I know you didn't come here for a science class, but give me a chance to explain. For all the years that we had first discovered stem cells, we have come to understand that once a stem cell differentiates or turns into a specific kind of cell, that's it. That's the end of the story, period. Almost in the same way, is if I were to write on ink on this blank sheet of paper, it is final. It cannot go back to being a completely blank sheet of paper again. And for a real long time, we accepted that. But as with all meaningful scientific research, it's just about asking the right questions. 10 years ago, a brilliant scientist named Dr. Yamanaka asked, well, what if we could go back? What if I wrote this in pencil instead of pen, and there's a way to erase the words so that I would have a completely blank sheet of paper again? Cue scientists around the world having their minds blown. Dr. Yamanaka understood this one simple concept, that just like us as humans, cells are a product of their environment. So, you can take any cell right now, put it in the same medium with these transcription factors that are normally found around a stem cell, and it changes that cell 
back into a stem cell, or as we call, induced pluripotent stem cells. It's like taking the last page out of your favorite novel, erasing it completely, and writing a brand new story. In reality, biology is so much more fluid than we teach it to be. Right now, your muscle cells have the potential to go back to a stem cell and then turn into a heart cell if it wanted to. A neuron can become a bone cell, a skin cell can become an egg cell. Ah, now we get to the good part. Now you have all the scientific tools you need to understand how same-sex reproduction works. So let's take this male-male couple, for example. We'll call them Jim and Bob. You start out by extracting skin cells from Jim and putting it in that medium that turns it back into a stem cell. And then you take these stem cells and program them into egg cells. Next, you fertilize these egg cells with Bob's sperm cells. And finally, put that fertilized embryo inside a surrogate who carries it until birth. Voila! That is how two guys can have a baby together. Oh my god, science, right? When I first heard about this, I was so skeptical that a process like this could actually work. But in these past two years, an immense amount of time and research has gone into this technology and how we can make it a reality. Don't get me wrong, there's still a few more kinks to work out. But this framework has been tested and supported, and we are inching our way into having this actually applied in our society. Let me put this in perspective for you. Remember my blank sheet of paper and all the potential it had for the things that could be written or drawn on it? Well, science is about asking the right questions. Dr. Yamanaka asked, what if we could erase the words so that we could go back to the blank paper? That is how we got induced pluripotent stem cells. Now, scientists are asking, well, what if we don't just write or draw on the paper? What if we could fold it and turn it into something completely different? If a stem cell is the blank page to the human body, then using it for same-sex reproduction is like making a swan out of that piece of paper. The paper is now being used in a manner we have never imagined it to be before. When we think of stem cells, we see it as something that fixes what is broken with our body. However, this definition or this research rejects that definition. What if stem cells don't just fix, but instead adds to our lives? So let's add this to our society. I read this article two years ago. Guess what, folks? It's 2017, which means that this could be happening sooner rather than later. But before you get too excited and jump out of your seats, remember that no scientific advancement has gone the automatic green light without carefully exploring the moral and ethical implications of the situation. Sure, this technology could be perfected by the end of 2017. But the implementation could take 10 years. Because science is inexplicably connected to our social, economic, religious, and political world. While stem cells might answer this one question, it opens up 100 new questions for debate. Like, is this process too unnatural? What would be the mental and physical state of a child coming out of this process? Would our government pass legislation on it the same way they did for same-sex marriage? Think about it. Would the people who fought same-sex marriage also fight same-sex reproduction? What kind of money would this procedure cost? And if so, who would it be available to? I could go on forever with these kinds of questions. But that's not what I'm here to do today. I want to highlight the important ethical considerations you probably didn't think of right away. The kinds that might not go into effect tomorrow, but have a huge impact down the line. For example, what is that fear everyone has when they hear the words 
stem cells, research, genetics, reproduction, all put together. Designer babies. The idea that I could choose to have a child and say, I want it to be a girl. I want it to have green eyes and this brown hair and this IQ and this personality. A world where our future looks like the one in the movie Gattaca, where our whole society is governed by genetics. Well, I'm here to tell you today that using stem cells for same-sex reproduction does not all of a sudden allow us to have designer babies. Even if this whole process of conception sounds confusing to you, at the end of the day, it's still a random sperm cell fertilizing a random egg cell, and we do not get to choose the genes or characteristics of the child coming out of it. Sure, a society like the one in Gattaca won't happen overnight, but we still need to be cautious because it could happen progressively. If we green light this kind of technology, who's to say we won't green light the next one? And the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, until one day we wake up and it's bam, Gattaca and designer babies everywhere. In evaluating the technology behind same-sex reproduction, we have to understand the gravity of the consequences this could have 20 to 30 years down the line. Here's another implication you probably didn't think of. Remember Jim and Bob? Well, what if this was Sue and Mary? What if we had a female-female couple? The science behind it would still be the same. You take the skin cells of Sue, turn it back into a stem cell, and then turn that into a sperm cell. You take Sue's sperm cells, Mary's egg cells, and here's the best part about two women, you don't even need a surrogate. Either Sue or Mary could carry the child. So then, what's the catch? The key difference is that two men have both an X and a Y chromosome. They could conceive either boys or girls. However, two women have only X chromosomes. They could conceive only girls. Let that sink in for a second. This would not be the same situation as designer babies. Two women would not be choosing to have only girls. That would be the only choice they have. Science might allow us to find a way to have two people of the same gender have a baby together, but we do not yet have a way to create a synthetic Y chromosome. So X's are all we got. Now, if it were up to me, I mean, I wouldn't mind having a few more females in this world, am I right? But ultimately, this would be a form of gender control. Up until now, our whole society has been rooted in the fact that every one of our genders is here because of chance. I am a woman today, not because my parents specifically chose me to be, but because that's just how the dice rolled. With same-sex reproduction, we now have a way to control for gender we have never encountered before. It's like tipping the scale in a balance that up until now, we thought to be fairly even. Some people may argue that this is enough reason to completely stop same-sex reproduction in its tracks, or at least restrict it from lesbian couples. But is that really fair? Is the prospect of a few extra females enough reason to make this unavailable to lesbian couples? Something I have not shared with you all yet is that one of the reasons I was so attracted to this research is because my sister is gay. And I love my sister. All I want for her in the world is to be able to have kids of her own. I can look at my partner today and be so excited at the prospect of having kids with him. Our kids would be a unique blend of the two of us. His eyes, my hair, his intelligence, my sass. But that chance to have children together is a privilege. It is something that not everyone in this world, not even everyone in this room right now, gets to experience. I hope that one day my sister can feel that same excitement 
by looking at her partner and having a child together that represents the both of them. Here's the thing. We are living in exciting times. Just two years ago, same-sex marriage passed the Supreme Court. And in two years, we figured out how to turn a stem cell into an egg cell. Up until now, we have seen science and social advocacy as two completely separate arenas. But now, we have a beautiful opportunity to see a union of the two. Stem cells can serve as a treatment to diseases and illnesses, but can also act as an advocate to LGBTQ rights. But before I can do any of that, we, as a society, have to look at this technology behind same-sex reproduction and ask, where do we draw the line with ethical science? What is right and what is wrong? Are the reasons behind same-sex reproduction compelling enough to move forward with this research, or should we stop it in its tracks before it goes any further? The inescapable truth is that while scientists may wield the technology, only you have the power to implement it. I guarantee you, in a few years' time, you will find yourself sitting in front of a ballot contemplating legislation on same-sex marriage. Only you can answer that question, so choose wisely. Thank you.